everyone, Kara from Kara's Couture Cakes here, and Munchie. Today we're going to be showing you how to make a tiny little modeling chocolate, gum paste, or fondant waffle cone and ice cream scoop. We're going to start by using a do-it-yourself mold material from Avalon at Avalon Cakes. You can find it in her Facebook shop. Link should be right there for you. And just a couple other ingredients from your local craft store. Let's get started. Okay, so here we have all of the tools and materials that we're going to need to make our little waffle cone mold using Avalon's mold material, which I have pre-made right here, ready to go. This is a plastic canvas. I got this at my local craft store. They come in different sizes. This one, here, let me see. This one is a little bit finer. This one looks to be maybe an eighth of an inch square openings. This one's a little bit more than that. Maybe the other one's sixteenth and this is eighth. I suppose I can measure right here. Yep, this one's this one's an eighth inch. The eighth inch is what we're going to be using for our needs. Um, now this one is nice and big and it's flat. It lays completely flat. This other one I stored improperly, and you can see it has this big bulge right here and these right here, and this right here. For this purpose, this isn't going to work. So make sure that when you pick one from the store, it's nice and flat, and that when you store it, it's flat until you're ready to cut it or use it however you need. So what I did with this was I just used a pair of kitchen shears. This is really, really, really easy to cut. Just as simple as the plastic that might be on a tag on a shirt that you get at the store. So I cut it into about a four and a half by four and a half inch square. I really didn't measure for any specific reason except for that this it needs to fit perfectly in my dish. My dish that I'm, we're going to be molding and casting in has sloped sides, so I need to make sure that this does not sit out towards the slopes or it'll sit at an angle and that'll ruin our mold. So this will sit perfectly flat. Now you can probably see the slight shadow. It's not 100% flat. We can fix that and I'm going to show you how. Right here I have some little votive candles, well excuse me, tea lights, that I've removed from their tea light containers. These are just white candles, bulk style. Got them in about a hundred in a bag, or I think maybe three dollars. You can pull them straight out so long as you haven't done any kind of melting or burning. And then if you just give this wick a tiny little push, the bottom part will come straight out. I'm going to discard that. We're going to put all of our candle wax in here and we're going to melt this briefly in the microwave. We'll be right back. Okay, so I have my clear candle wax melted. I didn't melt all of them, it was just a little bit too much. Now we are going to work very quickly because this sets very, very quick once it hits a cooler surface. So we are going to very quickly pour this on here and while it's warm our plastic mesh has set into our wax. I did pop it in the freezer for a minute to kind of speed it up a little. These plates, these ceramic plates, like to hold the heat. That's perfectly fine to do so long as it's not sloshing around when you set it in there. So now we're going to take Avalon's do-it-yourself mold material. I'm going to be pouring from up high. It's warm. But I want to make sure that I cover very specifically that piece of plastic. I'm not looking for it to be ultra thick. I don't need it. This is reusable, so it's not like you have this huge loss of materials or anything like that. That little bit of white is just my some of my white food coloring that I added in there to get this really awesome green. It just wasn't fully mixed. Give it a little tap. Make sure there are no air bubbles down in that little mesh. And I'm going to let this set up as per Avalon's instructions. And we'll be back once this is all set. Okay, so our mold material has set. We're going to take it out of the take it out of its pan. Well, ceramic dish. 
Very gently pull it away. You can see we have this beautiful pattern on there now. We got a little bit of extra wax coming up around here, but that's not a huge deal. We'll still get the imprint there for the uh, for the little waffle cone. We're going to take this and we're going to discard it, or you can cast another one if you need to. If you're really careful, you can remove your your piece from there, your your plastic mesh, and you can save this and remelt it. You know, for whatever. If you're a Girl Scout, I guess you can make yourself a little Bunsen burner. Um, do people still do that? I did that. Um, but either way, you can save the wax. So we're just going to wipe this off just a little, make sure that any of the residual fat is gone from there and that there's no that there's no wax on there left over from from the mold. I'm gonna set this aside for oop, for just a second. And we are going to get ready our modeling chocolate for it. Now I'm just using a white modeling chocolate for the cone at this point and I'll tell you why as we're decorating, but we're going to start with white rather than a brown. I've already kind of preconditioned this. Some cornstarch down. I'm going to roll this relatively thin. I'm not going to need all that I have here. I'm actually going to cut some excess away. This is the size we'll end up cutting the final piece after it's molded. is this is relatively thin that's maybe maybe a sixteenth of an inch maybe a little less but we're going to put that on our mold and take our mold and get some cornstarch in there then we're going to take our modeling chocolate press it on top now you're going to start with your cornstarch patter. You start in the center and move outwards. Always return to the center and go outwards. Don't double back over your work. At least not in this direction. Always in an outward moving direction. The reason is, is when you do that you're going to move it back in this direction and it's going to kind of mush them. You're going to lose all that beautiful pattern. crunch of cornstarch or corn flour if you're overseas. That's going to come back up very easily. We have this beautiful little pattern. So now we're going to take our cutter. This cutter is about three inches round. You can do this whatever size you need to. Now if you have some areas like we do right here where the wax had risen and so it's a little bit there's not as much relief to it just move your cutter over a little bit and what we can do is actually tuck that under when we do our our wrapping we're going to cut that circle out set this aside and now I have a number 804 tip oh look CIA my alma mater yay um, so we're gonna use an 804 tip to actually mold this and let it set up. I have just a little bit of sugar glue and a paintbrush. And first I'm going to take this, kind of use my finger to begin wrapping it. You're going to want to pull this up so that you start to have a little bit of an angle here. Then you're going to do the same thing with this side. Pull it at an angle. Trying to get a point at this end. So now you kind of have a start. Angle it in a little bit more. that you have a point like that. Now I don't work this too much at this part because now it's beginning to take on my hands temperature. You know how modeling chocolate gets when it's like this. A little bit of corn flour, corn starch on your tip. 
set this up on your tip to form just a little tiny tiny little bit of sugar glue inside this flap. Tuck it over gently. You don't want to handle it too much because you're going to lose all these beautiful, beautiful ridges and patterns on here. So real quick, this is where we are. If you want, you can kind of pull that bottom edge out a little bit, get just a little bit of a flare almost. And now we're going to let this sit until it's firmed back up. If it's very, very warm in your kitchen, go ahead and put this on a little plate and into your refrigerator. Just keep in mind, with modeling chocolate, if you put it in the refrigerator for too long and it gets too cool or it's very, very humid in your kitchen, that when you pull it out, it might get a little bit of condensation on it and it's going to prevent you from working with it for a little while. So just mind your modeling chocolate manners. So we'll let this set up and I will be right back. Okay, so our cone is still setting up a little bit, so I'm going to show you how to make two ice cream scoops. Sounds easy, right? Well, kind of. Um, so we're going to do two different kinds. We're going to do chocolate and we're going to do strawberry. Um, now this is a modeling chocolate fondant mix that I have done with both of these. And these ones are both fondant. I'm using some more saturated colors of the same color that our modeling chocolate is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this more saturated color and I'm going to give our ice cream swirls because I can't just have plain ice cream I gotta have swirls and inclusions and other fabulously fun things in it so I'm gonna roll both of them into logs they don't have to be perfect this isn't science this is ice cream well modeling chocolate ice cream I'm just going to give it a little twist. I'm going to bring it over on itself. Maybe fold it again and fold it again. Now I'm going to start looking for a modeling, excuse me, a marbling effect. I'm going to start pulling them together, really kneading them together. I don't want huge streaks in there. And granted, that's the jackpot whenever you're having ice cream, right? You get that gigantic streak of fudge swirl or strawberry swirl. Yeah, that's the good stuff. So we're going to do it again with the chocolate. This is a little bit much for me, so I'm going to break it in half. This time I'm going to give it a little twist instead, like this. another twist. You can get lots of different effects just by moving them differently. Now these are going to have slightly different textures because this was all modeling, was mostly modeling chocolate, and that was all fondant. So they're going to have slightly different textures and fondant's going to want to kind of peel away. But I gotta tell you, when you actually scoop that with our makeshift ice cream scoop, which we'll do in a moment, it looks really cool. It looks like this big chunk of flaky fudge in the middle of an ice cream cone. Okay, so we've got our two balls that we're going to be using as our ice cream. And now this is a scoop, a portion scoop. This is a number 40 portion scoop. This is from the Pampered Chef. I've had this for ages. It's beautiful. These are great, great tools for doing drop cookies. Um, I don't ever make drop cookies without my portion scoops. So we're going to start with our strawberry. And we are simply going to take this and load our fondant modeling chocolate mix into it. And this is almost flat across the bottom. But what I'm going to do is just very gently pull this away from the sides. I am not looking for anything even remotely clean. I am looking for it to look a little bit torn and a little bit kind of rough. Now, hold your hand out, give it a squeeze. Giving it a squeeze is going to give you this wonderful little effect that you get from a real ice cream scoop. So we've got our strawberry. And it's got swirls and it looks like it looks like it was just fresh scooped. So we're gonna set this aside. Reserve our fondant. We're gonna do the same thing with our chocolate. Try to clear off any of the 
strawberry that you might have left in there. If you pull the trigger, you'll be able to get the other side of the, the arm, the swipe arm, if there's anything left. Not a big deal if there is, but. So now we're gonna take this, the chocolate one, and again, put that in there. There we go. This one's really good. I'm gonna pat that down just a little bit so that there's not a flap. Move these down just a little too. But now we have our chocolate. Okay, so we're ready to assemble our ice cream cone. Normally I wouldn't do this until the end of my decorating process so that I could immediately put it where it needs to be for its final presentation. But I have a little setup that I can use um, in case I need to do these ahead of time or just to show you today. So first we're going to take our cone and we're going to fill it because our ice cream scoops, if we were to place it right on top of our cone, would just kind of crush it. And we don't want that. This cone is absolutely adorable. So we made a little fondant and modeling chocolate mix just from what was left over from our chocolate um, and I turned it into a little teardrop cone shape so that I can fill my cone. Um, I'm using the chocolate color because my chocolate is going to be the scoop on the bottom. So I want it to look like there's chocolate underneath it in there. So I'm going to take my cone, put just a little bit of glue, sugar glue, inside. I'm going to measure that. I'm just going to pinch off the top part that will be sticking up too much. Flatten it out just a little bit more. Now we're going to put that right in. Just pat it down just a little bit. Now I'm going to take what I usually use for my sugar flowers, my little setup, and I'm going to set this in here very gently. I just took a little bit of bumpy foam that I usually use to shape petals and other kinds of things um, and I cut a hole in it and I cut off the ridges of these four just so that this could sit down in there and sit down between those little grates in my wire rack. might actually need just a little bit more. Tiny, tiny bit of glue. Support it from underneath just for a moment. There we go. Now take this, just give it a little bit of an outwards flare so that it'll accommodate our ice cream scoop. And now we're again going to put just a little bit of glue on here, just a little. But we are also going to add some fettuccine. You can use regular spaghetti, but these are kind of hefty, so I want to give them a little bit of stronger support. So I'm going to use fettuccine to set them on there. I'm just going to break it off where I need it. Gently push it down. You don't want it to go all the way through. You want to give yourself a little extra room. That might be just a little tall. I'm going to break off another small piece. I'm still feeling like that's a little bit tall. I think that'll be good. So now I'm going to put this glue on there. And now when I put my when I put my ice cream scoop on there, you remember that side that had all that really beautiful, wonderful texture? That I'm going to have facing outwards. I have my little V shape where the cone came together facing me. That's going to be my front. And I'm going to take my scoop of ice cream, holding it at the back very, very gently, pressing it down onto my fettuccine. And it's going to come out the top. Now I make oversized scoops for my ice cream cones because that's just what I do. So this one's kind of billowing out over it. It's one of those really generous kids kind of dream ice cream scoop. Now this other ice cream scoop is going to sit on top of that. I'm actually going to pat, I should have done it before I put the 
the glue on, but I have a little extra fettuccine that I can do. I'm going to pat this down just a little bit around where the fettuccine is so that I have a slightly flat surface for the bottom of the other scoop of ice cream to go down on. So it's just a little bit more stable and doesn't want to wobble off as much. Take this one. Again, support it from underneath, gently. I'm feeling like that might actually be too tall. Might be just a tad too tall. I'm gonna snap that off. Find that same spot. And thread it down. Now, normally I wouldn't take this out, but I gotta show you. We are going to let this rest and come together, but we have a little ice cream cone so far. So we're going to let this rest for a little while since we're going to have to handle it after it comes out of here. You could put it in the fridge to get it to set quicker. Um, again, you have to be careful of condensation and things like that, and since we have it sitting in foam, I don't know that I would recommend that. Um, but if you're putting this directly on your finished piece, and this is the last little component of decoration, then you can go ahead and start decorating once you secure it on there and you know it's nice and firm. But we're going to let this set up for a little bit, and then I'll show you how to finish it off. Okay, so we finished our ice cream cone. It's set up. I did put it in the fridge for a couple minutes just to make sure especially that the ice cream scoops are nice and firm and ready to go. When I place, this is actually sitting on a bamboo skewer going through a cake dummy um, to be finished. Normally this would probably already be in a cake or on a, another sugar prop, um, but since I'm doing this for you here, we just have it in a little, in a little cake dummy. Um, so I have taken some of my gel colors. This is ivory and this is egg yellow. And we're going to use these to add color to our cone. Let me bring it a little closer. I'm going to start with the egg yellow since it's lighter. I'm going to barely get any on my brush. It's pretty dry. I'm just going to go over it really lightly. Not this one, but the actual project that I originally created this for. It's sitting behind this white board here, but I can't show you. It's killing me a little bit. So the ice cream cone is kind of my my way of holding off my excitement. Okay, so we've got our, our base coat of yellow on there, the egg yellow. Now I'm going to take some of the ivory, same way, very lightly load my brush, and hold my brush very much, let's see if you can see it better on the side, very much at a parallel angle to to our waffle cone. I'm just going to go over very lightly. I don't want it getting into all the cracks and crevices. I do try to get into the seams so it doesn't look like they were forgotten. Just with a little bit. If you actually go in very carefully but with just a little bit of extra of the ivory, really kind of get in there. You're going to give it a little bit of a shadow and you're going to help bring out some dimension. This is the part of cake and sugar that I enjoy the most is all the little details that we get to put in. I am going to try to get the tops of these a little bit. But there you have it, our ice cream cone.
cupcakes. <sighs> I don't know how to say this. There's a link right down there, I believe, to make a tiny little free tutorial for you and Munchie is going to kick around all of his blocks while I'm saying this so that nobody can hear a thing. Quiet on the set!